Hey you witches, how you doing today? We are back with another video and today I'd like to talk about traditional witchcraft and one of its, the points from its definition. So there are six basic points to the definition of traditional witchcraft that I work with and the main one is that it's based on folklore. So sometimes it's traditional witchcraft, but sometimes people call it folkloric witchcraft. And so I want to talk about folklore in general, and then I want to talk about the witchcraft trial records as a form of folklore in specific, okay? So before we get into it, for those of you who are new around here, welcome to the channel. My name is Taya, and um, for those of you who are returning viewers, maybe coming in from another video, welcome back. Thank you so much for the support. It is really appreciated. And all of you, please consider subscribing. It's a really great way to help us build the channel. So, folklore. What is folklore? Folklore is the traditional beliefs customs and stories of a community. It can include things like stories, tales, myths, proverbs, charms, riddles, uh, songs, ballads, poems, and prayers. It can even include things like recipes and crafts. And it also includes local or cultural customs or traditions. So, if you are interested in that kind of stuff, if you're interested in folklore, I'm gonna add in a little um, little personal advertisement here. You might be interested in an upcoming class that I'm teaching called Adapting Folklore. And we basically are gonna look at how do you adapt folklore to build your personal witchcraft practice. We will look at types of folklore. We will look at how to interpret and customize folklore. And we will look at how to incorporate that then into your witchcraft practice. So if that interests you, my class Adapting Folklore, it happens via Zoom. So it's online. So anyone from anywhere can join us. And it is on Wednesday, May 18th of 2022 at 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So if you're interested in a few details um, or you're interested in registering, you can visit etwguild.com, etwguild.com, and when you get there, click on classes and then scroll down. You'll see a part about like, these are classes about customizing your witchcraft practice. And the last one of those is adapting folklore. So give it a little scroll and check it out. Okay, I'll also post the information in my, um, the link is in the description below, and I will also post it on the community tab. So anyways, back to folklore. Um, I want to talk about a very important type of folklore <clears throat> in European-based traditional witchcraft. I suppose also American-based traditional witchcraft. Um, I want to talk about the witchcraft trial records because I think there's a lot of misunderstanding about the witchcraft trial records. The biggest thing you hear a lot is people saying, how can you, you know, we know that those who were persecuted weren't witches. So how can you now turn around and take what they're saying and build a witchcraft practice off that? And I get it. It doesn't kind of make sense unless you think about it more holistically. So we know that they weren't witches, right? It was some girl who's in the wrong place at the wrong time. She walked out her front door and kind of looked sideways at the neighbor. He felt like it was a dirty look. The next day his chickens take sick and he calls witchcraft. And all of a sudden she's persecuted for witchcraft. And she was just some girl in the wrong place at the wrong time. We know that and I like totally acknowledge that. But if you look at all the different confessions that happened over a vast geologic, geological area, right? Like there was this community here and that community there and it was spread all across, all across like the British Isles and Western Europe. And you also look at the span of time over a span of 200 years over this vast geological region over a vast amount of years. And keeping in mind that back in like the 1500s and 1600s, they didn't have the internet. They didn't even have telephones. <laughs> Right? You couldn't um, post an idea up and have it just boom, spread out to the masses. So on that note, when you look at all of these confessions over this vast area and time period, they all have these very common themes that happen 
throughout them. So how did people, how did they make these very similar confessions in all of these different geological regions, different countries, and over different, this like time span of like 200 years? Why are they all so similar? And it's because they were sharing the folklore at the time about what witches do. So things like pacting with the devil, maybe having relations with the devil, um, right? Meeting with their coven of witches, um, flying out to the other world and having the witches Sabbath. Um, what else? I mean, some crazy stuff, right? Like, oh, burying deceased babies in fields to, you know, make the crops fail. But you see these, the queen of Elfame, um, right? The, the queen of the, of, the, um, of the fairies and of the other world. Um, you just see these common themes all pulled throughout. And that's because at the time, just like there is now, there, is, there was this common narrative, this common folklore about what witches do. And people were basically reporting just on the rumors and, and, and folklore that they had heard. Think of it um, very similar to something today. We have this cultural phenomenon known as Santa Claus. If you put me under thumbscrews, I can tell you all about how Santa Claus smells like gingerbread and peppermint. I can tell you about his red velvet suit with white fur trim. I can tell you about his magical reindeer that fly. One of them even had a shiny red nose that would like guide them through the night. I can tell you about the elves that help build all of the toys that he delivers and how they, you know, load up his sleigh on Christmas Eve. I can tell you about him going down Chimneys, I can tell you about how, you know, the children leave out cookies and milk. Like, I can go on and on about Santa Claus. Why? Have I ever met the man? Nope. But I can tell you all about Santa Claus. And so could pretty much any man, woman, or child in North America or Europe, right? All the areas where we celebrate with Santa Claus. Um, because there's this massive folklore built around it. And probably not, none of us have individually actually met Santa Claus, but we would share very similar stories. Might be a few differences here and there, depending on the culture, right? Just like in the witchcraft trials, there's a few little differences, but the general theme of it will, stay, will hold up. Just like with the witchcraft trials. There were people talking about, right, witchcraft. There was sort of folklore at the time, gossip about what those witches were up to. And when people were put under torture, they quite readily confessed to everything that they knew. And those witchcraft trial records captured the folklore at the time around what witches do. And that's why we can use that folklore to now build our witchcraft practices in the year 2022. So I hope that makes sense. Um, if you have questions, leave them in the comments below, but I absolutely love working with witchcraft trial records. Uh, Isabel Gaudi is one of my favorites. You'll often hear it said that she confessed that she wasn't under torture and she was not under torture by the standards of the 1600s. She wasn't like, you know, thumb screws or stretched out or, you know, waterboard, you know, whatever it is that they did at the time for torture. She still would have been sleep deprived, food deprived, deprived of contact with the outside world. So by today's standards, there still would have been torture. Um, but by the terms of the 1600s, yes, she was not put under direct torture to elicit her her confessions. So many people like to work with the confessions of Isabel Gaudi in under the guise that they were more, um, <clears throat> they were more truthful, you know, that she really maybe was a practicing witch because she freely confessed to all of these and, and very detailed confessions about all of the crazy antics that she supposedly got up to as a witch. So definitely one to check out is Isabel Gaudi. 
Um, you can Google her. There is a great book by Emma Wilby called The Visions of Isabel Gaudi. Um, I'd hold it up for you. Um, it's a very, well, I don't have it. Uh, I have it, but I don't have it here with me. Um, it's a very academic book, but it's also very insightful because it, um, the, the, I think it's the first chapter, goes into what Isabel Gaudi's wife, life would have looked like as like the wife of um, basically a, a, f a farmer at the time and what her, her life really would have been like. And a big part of adapting folklore is understanding sort of the life of the, the, the author of the folklore. So Isabel Gaudi being the author of this piece of very particular folklore, what was her life really like? Um, and Emma Wilby does a brilliant job of, of breaking that down and really, you know, letting you know about the hardships that her everyday life would have had. And um, yeah, great book, Visions of Isabel Gowdy by Emma Wilby. If you are interested in Scottish trial records, there is, um, I believe it's called the Compendium of Scottish Witch Trials. You can Google it and um, it's got, I'll, I'll put the link in the description below. <clears throat> it's got all, like you can look up individual um, people from Scotland who are accused of witchcraft, including Isabel Gowdy. Um, it's very a very interesting database of confessions. So anyways, if that's the kind of stuff you're interested in, I will leave a link below. And um, otherwise, yeah, that's sort of our video for today. Do you work with uh, witchcraft trial records. Um, I know there's like the Salem records from from in the early uh, Americas and of course there's tons of witchcraft records from Western Europe. I would love to know sort of your experiences of working with those and if that's something you do in your practice and how you incorporate those and use them to build your practice or any other type of folklore for that matter, right? What is your favorite piece of folklore? What do you use to build your practice? Share it in the comments below. I'd love to have a discussion. It's always interesting to see sort of where everybody else is coming from. Um, and otherwise, yeah, that's our video today. So we will catch you in the next one. Mwah. Thanks so much, you guys. <laughs>